A Republican gubernatorial candidate in Mississippi, Robert Foster, is under fire this morning for denying a female reporter access to a ride-along with him and his campaign, that is, unless a male colleague joined her. Foster saying this could create a, quote, awkward situation. Joining us now to discuss this is the reporter, Larison Campbell. She's with Mississippi Today and Mississippi State Representative Robert Foster, a Republican running for governor, is joining us by phone uh, it's great to have you both with us this morning. Larison, first to you. This is something that your news organization did and was provided for with the other candidates. What were you going for and what were you told? Absolutely. So, you know, in the uh, months leading up to the Republican primary, we've really been trying to give our readers kind of an inside access to all of the campaigns. And we have three uh, Republican can um, gubernatorial candidates. So we've been doing these ride-alongs, sort of to let our readers see you know, what it's like on the campaign trail and kind of give them a perspective into these candidates' position by watching them inter um, interact with supporters out there. You know, we really, we really want to give our readers as much information about these campaigns as we can. And so we did it with um, his two opponents, and we offered the same thing to him. I was going to cover him. I've covered Representative Foster for a while. And um, I thought everything was going to be fine. And then they kind of came back at me with this one caveat. One caveat, Representative, which was that she couldn't do it alone. She needed a male along with her. If a man, a male reporter, had asked for a ride along, would you have granted him a solo interview? I would have, and uh, appreciate y'all having me on this morning. Um, I think uh, it's it's important for everybody, you know, to understand the the dynamics here. I've I've done several interviews with Miss Campbell over the last few years, and I have no problem doing interviews with any reporter. Uh, but this was a different request. It was to be a ride along, as she stated. You know, it was going to be a 15 to 16 hour day. And I have a very small campaign staff at this point in my campaign. I'm, uh, you know, the underdog candidate running with a grassroots campaign, and we don't have a big staff. And there's a lot of times where my campaign director and I have to go separate ways, even during the middle of the day, to try to, you know, cover different things from stop to stop. And I didn't want to end up in a situation where me and Ms. Campbell were, the, were alone for extended period of time throughout that 15 to 16 hour day. And so out of precaution, uh, I wanted to have uh, her bring someone with her, a um, male colleague. And it's, it's the other thing that I think is important to point out is that this is my truck. And in my truck, we go by my rule. Okay. And uh, that's, that's, that's my rule. You said it's a precaution. Is it that you didn't trust Larison or you didn't trust yourself? I'm confused here. Uh, I trust myself completely, but I don't trust the uh, perception that the world puts on people when they see things and they don't ask the questions. They don't look to find out the truth. Perception is reality in this world, and I don't want to give anybody the uh, opinion that I'm doing something that I should not be doing. Larison? Yeah, so I've got a couple of things to say here. First of all, like you said, it's your truck. It's your rules. Why is it my responsibility to make you feel comfortable about something that um, – you know, that is that again, as your campaign director said on the phone with me, is this weird request that you have? Why was I the one? Why is the onus on me to bring someone along? Because y'all wanted to do the interview. I didn't ask y'all to come with me to do but, the interview. So it's my it, rule, it's my truck. I mean, but it's again, your rule. Again, no other candidates have ever had a rule like this. And I mean, okay, let's go back to the appearance of impropriety thing. Why does it appear improper for a man to be with a woman? I mean, why wouldn't like a gay affair be construed if you were with a man? Unless at the end of the day, what you're saying here is a woman is a sexual object first and a reporter second. People, when they see a woman with a man, are going to automatically assume that she's there for, you know, with an improper relationship because, again, they see a woman as a woman, as a sexual object first, and as someone who's doing my job second. Well, first of all, uh, I'm a married man, and I made a vow to my wife, and part of the agreement that we've also made throughout our marriage is that we would not be alone with someone of the opposite sex uh, throughout our marriage, and that is a vow that I have with would my you... wife, that I put, I put that and my faith and my, and my religion, that is the reason why we have that vow above anyone else's feelings, including yours, and I apologize to you for that, that it may hurt your feelings, but I would much rather uphold my vow to my wife over anyone else. Can I, can I flip the script for a second? Um, so let's say um, one of the people running for attorney general right now is a two-term treasurer. It's a woman, Lynn Fitch. 
Lynn Fitch has, I've never heard of her making this request of any of my male colleagues. If a woman did this, if a female candidate did this, people would say she's making men bring people along with her. Like she can't, if she doesn't feel comfortable doing this, she can't do her job. How can you do your job? How can you like tell Mississippians that you will be a good governor if you can't, you know, be alone in a room with a woman? I mean, look at like um, our current Governor Bryant's staff. You know, one of his top attorneys, one of his top policy directors, those are all women. How are you going to do that if you can't be alone with a woman? Uh, it's very simple. You always can have the uh, door open and have people right in the room next door. Uh, but this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about a 15 to 16 hour vehicle ride in my truck. That's what we're talking about. Let me ask one so question. So why aren't you the one providing someone? Anyway. <laughs> no, no, and Larson, uh, I, I, you, you jump back in here in one second. I just want to ask, Representative, what do you think would happen if you were alone in a room with Larison? She seems to me to be a, a professional reporter who asks questions. What do you think happens? Uh, nothing, and that's what I just stated. You can have the door open and have people in the room next door and so that there's nothing there, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about riding in my truck for a 15 to 16 hour day. What happens in your truck that's different than a room with an open door? It's just the perception, and that's a rule that I've always had and I've always followed. It's a very professional rule that many other people, including Billy Graham and Governor Mike Pence, have followed, and many other leaders throughout our nation. Did people uh, have any have reason? To, that did people have any reason to think anything of you and who rides in your truck? Why would they ever think that that a professional? I'm not going to give, give them the opportunity to, and that's the whole point. Larison, uh, the idea of equal access. How does this play? Do you think that male reporters Absolutely. in Mississippi are treated the same way? I mean, uh, no. And, I, and I've actually, and you know, I, I want to kind of take a step back here and say, obviously, this is a Mississippi situation. This happened in Mississippi. It's a Mississippi political story. But it's also, I think, it's a bigger story than Mississippi. I've heard from a lot of women in the last 24 hours, like around the country who, you know, whether it's next door in Alabama or it's across the country in like Colorado oh. or LA who are like, this is happening. Politics is a men's club. And you know, if you're a woman, you're seen kind of as an outsider. Again, when you go back to this idea of perception is everything, women are perceived to not belong there because you are people are a large group of people are used to seeing men in those spaces. Um, Representative, so, I just um, I just got a note from someone who spent a week with Larison at a conference on, on health journalism and said that she is a professional and ethical journalist. I don't understand from you, as a public elected official, the message you're sending to young girls who want to be journalists. That they well, can't, the they, they can, hang on, that they can't do the same job that young men can do who want to be journalists? Oh, absolutely, they can do the same job. We're talking about a specific 15 to 16 hour ride along in my truck. With I had one caveat that she did not want to follow that rule, and that's okay, and I understand her position, but I have my position, and I don't have to uh, break my rule in my vehicle for anyone, and I think it's also important to point out the fact that because of the Me Too movement now, men are under attack all of the time. Sometimes those accusations come out to be true, but there are many times they have been proven to be false, and I'm not going to allow myself to be put in a situation or someone, and I'm not saying Ms. Campbell would ever do this, but I'm not going to ever be put in a situation with any female to where they could make an accusation against me, and there's not a witness there to uh, to refute that accusation. Larison, I want to give you the last word here. Yeah, um, I mean, I think, look, there are a couple of things here. I think we've got to go back to this idea. We, we can't talk about this without talking about perception being everything. And if you're saying that it, the look of impropriety is out there, it's because you're saying that women don't belong in these spaces, <laughs> that it's unusual to see women in these spaces, that women are sexual objects. And also, if it is your rule in your truck, then you provide the person. All right. That, that, can, that, can, be, that can definitely be arranged in the future. Uh, but again, I wanted to point out that I'm running a very small, so I've only got one staff member with me, and, and he's not always even with me. I'm sometimes alone on this campaign. And so uh, it's, it's, you know, a different stage of this campaign. If we make the runoff or make into the mm -hmm. general election, I will have a whole lot different operation. I don't have seven million dollars like one of my opponents in special interest funding. So it's just a different, whole different dynamic. Larison, you need to keep pushing for this Fine, interview. But it's sexism. <laughs> yeah. What was that? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'll let you have the last word. What did you just say? 
I, I was just to say, look, we got to call this what it is. When a woman isn't given access to the same things that a man would be given access to, it's sexism. And, and, and Representative, just yes or no, you don't deny you would give a man this access, yes? I would, and I stand my ground. All right, no ambiguity there. Representative Foster, uh, Larison Campbell, thank you very much for joining us this morning. That was fascinating. Thanks so much, Sean.